interesting. Page 434, questions about the homework. Now is your chance to ask. Yes? 5B and C, love to. Okay. 5B, oh, 5B. I was going to say 5A. Why does it say, okay, Zoom, good, vanished. Um, let's see. Probability that a student at random walks is 0.35, has blonde hair is 0.45, or is, uh, sorry, is 0.2, or is 0.45. So I'm going to, I guess, use the formula here because they gave me all this data. It looks like, uh, I'm going to use uh, W for walks, if that's okay, and how about B for blonde? So it looks like it's saying this. Probability of W is 0.35. Probability of blonde is 0.2. Probability of W or blonde is 0.45. And they want us to find and. Now, we're going to be finding and differently today, but you can find it from the or formula for a single event because we said this, the probability of W or B is the probability of W plus the probability of B minus and. Is that okay so far? Oh, you know what? I forgot to put the B and. How about putting the B there, Mr. Duick? Uh, Leah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plus this over to this side and I'm going to minus this over to that side to get the and by itself. I'm going to get a new equation that's going to look like this. And is going to be the first one plus the second one minus the or. It's going to be that plus that minus that. Oh, I can do this in my head, actually. 0.35 plus 0.2 is 0.55 minus 0.45. I think the and must have been point. One? I hope that's what it says in the back. Okay. I'm going to use the formula for C as well. Now in C, they want me to find or. So I'm going to see if I can go straight to the equation. Let's see how good I am here. Leah, I'm going to go the probability of heart or face card. It's going to be the probability of heart, uh, point 0.3. Right? Plus the probability of face card 0.2 minus and 0.1. Is that all right? Yeah, first day. Next. 8A, love to. Is 8 the one I'm. Oh, yeah. Cool. Is there a part A and a part B here? I'm going to go Venn diagram, especially because I noticed there's two different categories, and they've given me both. I think it's going to be easier to solve this with a Venn diagram. I'm going to draw my Venn diagram here in the middle. I could probably do this with the formula, but I'm going to say to myself, self, here's the first car. Here's the second car. Both cars started 40% of the time. As a decimal, that's 0.4. His first car started 20 times. You know what? I've got a problem because this is 40%, and this is in uh, numbers, not percent. So I'm going to pause now, and I'm going to, instead of putting a 0.4 there, I'm going to say, how many days of the month were there? What does the question say? Read carefully. 30. You know what? 40% of 30. I'm going to find 40% of 30. And you may remember from your math eight days, Jesse, of means multiple. 40% of means really times. 0.4 times 30. You know how many days 40% of the time is? This is 12 days. That's the number I'm going to put there. 12. How many times did his first car start? 
I'm not going to put a 20 there, though. What am I going to put here? 8, because there's my 20, right? Oh, by the way, how many times did only his first car start? 8 times. Right? Uh, second car started 18 times. There's a 12 there. This must be a 6. How many days of the month did you say there were? Uh, how many am I going to have to put out here, then, to make it add up to 30? Sit with authority, Jesse. Four. Now I can answer any question they want to. Uh, at least one. That means that or that or that. And or kind of means add. Uh, 20, you know what? 26 out of 30. Neither. Four out of 30. He's falling for a ride. Any others? Yep. Number nine, I think. Yep. <laughs> what does this question want me to find? Only oat mayo. I think, Leah, even though there isn't a part A and a part B, I think a Venn diagram is going to work better because... You know what they want me to find? This one here, not the overlap. I I find, I prefer Venn diagrams. I've used the formula with you guys, but my first approach is always, can I draw this as a Venn diagram? Have they told me the overlap? And if not, then I'll bail and try using the formula, especially because here they've given me numbers. I'm going to go like this. We have cornflakes and oatmeal. <clears throat> I always want to start in the middle. Did they tell me both? Did they tell me the overlap? They did? What? Good. How many kids liked cornflakes? 48. So I'm going to put a 48 here, right? Oh, no, no. I'm going to put a 26. How many kids like oatmeal? Don't know. Oh, what's this 20? Neither. Where's this 20 going to go? Right here. And Jesse, what do all these have to add to? How many kids? Ah, with authority, 80. Um, oh, so what's got to go right there? Uh, 80 minus 20 minus 26 minus 22. Uh, 12? Is it, yes? No? Am I wrong? Yeah? yeah? You have to do the arithmetic, but... Uh, 12. Now I've got every possible outcome. What do they want me to find? Only oatmeal. Oh, there it is. Only oatmeal. 12 out of 80. Now you can probably get there using the formula... I'm not quite sure it would be all that tidy. Is that all right? Perchés, yeah? Good. Any more? Okay. Now we're going to start to ask ourselves, basically up until now, we've been picking one thing, one card, one kid liking oatmeal or not. Now we're going to start to look at multiple events. What if you're doing something twice? What if you're picking two cards? What if you're rolling two dice? What if you're, today we're going to ask, what if you're doing one thing and another thing? And you want to find the probability. Today, boys and girls, Sesame Street is brought to you by the word and. Oh, I bet you there's like a Grover little, uh, Sesame Street and I should find that from YouTube. That'd be a great segue into this, wouldn't it? Today, lesson four. The event A and B. Well, there's kind of a hint. Or means what? Add. If you look at the first objective, what do you think and means? And means multiply. And basically, that's the whole lesson, except I'm just going to show you various ways to use that. 
Dylan's feeling a little short, you can help yourself to a taller chair. No problem. So, today I'm going to introduce to you very firmly the notion, the idea of a probability tree. Probably my favorite probability tool. Everybody get one? The sheet? Let's see. No, Dylan, you need to put a check mark here somewhere. You didn't. We need to. Here you go. So, here's situation number one. Yes or no? It's a simple game. If you're not sure, here you go. Or did you put it on somebody else's name who's not here? No, you got everybody. Okay. Here's the situation. We have a pot, and the pot has two white marbles and one black marble. We'll almost always start with a real simple one that we can wrap our brains around and then go more complex. So a ball is randomly selected, a marble is randomly selected, and it's not replaced. And then we're going to draw a second marble. And this is what I said today. We're going to be asking... What happens if there's two events, two, two experiments? It says, define the following events. Event A is the first ball is white. Event B is the second ball is white. It says, find the probability of A. Okay, what are the odds of getting a white ball right now? How many white balls are there in the container? Two. How many marbles are there in the container grand total? Two out of three. And then we're going to answer some further questions, but first I'm going to walk over here. If I was doing this, I would quickly sketch a tree. And the tree looks like this. You could get a white ball or not on the first draw. You can get a white ball on the second or not, white ball on the second or not. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make what we call a weighted probability tree. What did you tell me the odds were of getting a white ball on the first draw? I'd like you to put a little two out of three right there. By the way, what are the odds of not getting a white ball on the first draw? One out of three. Now we're going to walk down this branch. Now down this branch, we picked a white ball. Event B is that you get a second white ball. If we picked a white ball, how many white balls are left in this box? One out of how many? This is going to be one half. The odds of that occurring is one half. Down this branch, we picked a white ball. What are the odds of getting a black ball on your second draw? How many black balls are left in the container? One out of two. Victoria, down this branch, you picked a black ball. How many white balls are now left in the container? Out of? Yes, I know it's one, but I never reduce fractions. Not till the end. Uh, what are the odds of getting a black ball on the second draw if you've already got a black ball in your hand? Zero out of two. We call this a weighted probability tree. And Justine, you'll get quick enough that this takes you all of one second to draw. There is a built-in error check, by the way. What do those two add to? One. What do these two add to? One. What do these two add to? If you've done your tree right, each sub-branch, each group of sub-branches better add to one. If not, you've counted wrong or you missed something. So nice little built-in error check. And it's very, very visual because it says this. What's the probability B that the second ball is white? given that the first ball drawn is white. It's saying, look, if you know the first ball was white, what's the probability that the second ball is white? Now, I'm going to give you some notation. This is way too much to write. So we write, instead of writing out the phrase, given that the following has occurred, we write this. Probability of B. The abbreviation for given that is a long vertical line. A has occurred. And I read that as the probability of B given A. 
the probability that the second ball was white given that the first ball was white, if I want to fill in what A and B are. And it's one half. What's the probability of A and B both occurring at the same time? What's the probability of getting a white ball and a white ball? It's two out of three times one out of two. And means multiply. And you don't need to pull out a calculator because multiplying fractions is the easiest operations. How do I multiply fractions? Top times top, bottom times. So. Two out of six, yes? And I know it's one out of three. Okay, two out of six. Last day, we gave you the term mutually exclusive. No overlap. Today, we're going to be talking about dependent and independent, but I'm going to come back to that. I want to look at this situation two first. Situation two is exactly the same as situation one, but instead of holding on to the first ball, we're going to put it back in, shake the jar up, and start over. We're going to do it with replacement. So let's fill in our tree first. What are the odds of getting a white ball? Two out of three. What are the odds of getting a black ball? One out of three. OK, you put the ball back in. You shake it up. What are the odds of getting a white ball on your second draw? How many white balls are in the jar still? Two out of? Three. How many black balls are in the jar still? One out of three. Okay, this down this branch, you got a black ball. You looked at it. Ah, but this one says with replacement. So you put it back in the jar. You shook it all up. What are the odds of getting a white ball? Two out of three. And one out of three. Quick built-in error check. Adds to one, adds to one, adds to one. Good, I probably got everything right. So what's the probability of event A? Two out of three. What's the probability of event B given that event A has a... Oh, let's write our shorthand. Probability of B given A is also two out of three. What's the probability of A and B? Two out of three times two out of three, four out of nine. So we want to now define the term dependent and independent. There's a mathematical definition, and then there's a much easier tree definition. Dependent means the odds change depending on whether or not the first one occurred or not. This event here is dependent because if you get a white ball the first time, a white ball the second time, the odds are one half. If you don't, the odds are two out of two. This event here is independent because if you get a white ball, what were the odds of getting a white ball in the second draw? Two out of three. What if you didn't get a white ball? What were the odds of getting the white ball in the second draw? Two out of three. So the mathematical definition of Dependence says this, the probability that B occurs if you know that A occurs is not the same as the probability of B occurring if A didn't occur. Huh? Hey, hold on. Write it down and then patience. Oh, and independence, the probability of B occurring if you know that A occurred is the same as B occurring if A didn't occur. The odds of B occurring don't change whether A occurs or not. The odds of B occurring do change whether A occurs or not. That's the mathematical definition. The easier tree definition is this. Victoria, you know the... Oh, sorry, people are still writing. I'll wait. You know they are dependent if these two branches are different from those two branches. And then it must have depend it depends which branch you go down, you get different odds. You know they're independent if these two branches are the they are. That's that's what I use. That's my because I can quickly glance, oh independent. Well, and some of it's common sense as well. If I said to you, what are the odds of rolling a six? 
And on the second, what are the odds of picking a jack? Does whether you roll a six or not have any effect on whether you're going to pick a jack or not? They're independent. What are the odds of picking a black card and on the second card picking a jack? Uh, that depends because the first card could have been a black jack, and that'll change the odds of whether this, how many it'll change how many jacks are in the deck. They're dependent. Easiest way though is you spot it in the tree. So the multiplication law says this: the probability of A and B is the probability of A times and means multiply the probability of B. Make sure you're in the A branch, given that A occurred. Make sure you're on the same branch as the A. Oh, and for what it's worth, Dylan, if they are independent, it doesn't matter whether A occurred or not. So you can drop the little given that A occurs. This is the special subcase. I don't memorize that. In fact, I don't memorize this one. But this one is the one that's on your formula sheet. Although sometimes they'll divide by probability of A and they'll get the given by itself. In fact, this one we're going to spend some time with later. It really becomes much clearer because I've told you I'm not a big fan of the formulas. In fact, you're going to see only one time am I going to give you a formula and even then I'm going to cheat and ditch the letters. I'm going to, we're going to memorize a little acronym, a little mantra, a little chant to use. That's next class. I'm going to do a tree, example one. Example one says two cards. How many cards? Two. So I, Venn diagram, not going to help me much because Venn diagram is only if you're looking at one single card or what we did last day when we were doing or, or and we were saying, uh, well, one card. We're not, okay, we're not gonna do that. We're doing two. And uh, the first event is the first card is a face card. The second card is a face card. We're gonna do a tree. It's gonna look like this. Event A, event not A. How many face cards are there in the deck? Got to think a little bit. 12 out of 12 out of 52. How many non-face cards are there in the deck? Don't count. Use the complement, please. 40, right? I hope you didn't go count. I hope you went 52 minus 12. Complement. This is also where it works really well. 40 out of 52. And then we could have had a second face card or not. A second face card or not. Now, down this branch, we already picked a face card and we're holding it in our hand. So Miguel, how many face cards are now left in the deck? 11 out of, not 52, but 51. By the way, that's the probability of B given A. Oh, how many non-face cards are there in the deck? Which one? 40 out of, how could you double check to make sure you've done it right? Adds to one, that's your trigger, 30, no, no? okay, nice little built-in error check. Really, if you get the first half of each branch right, you're probably not going to get the second half wrong as long as you think. Oh, Miguel, down this branch, we got a non-face card. So, how many face cards are left in the deck still? Out of 51. How many non-face cards are left in the deck? 39 out of 51. By the way, Miguel, are these two branches different from those two branches? Oh, they're dependent. What it's really saying is the probability of B given A is different from the probability of B given not A. Whatever. See, now that I have my tree, I can answer every question almost with no work. Well, with a minimal amount of work. What does and mean? Multiply. Which branch has and, A, and, B? 12 out of 52 and 11 out of 51. Now, I'm not going to reach for my calculator because, Patrick, I know that uh, that times that I've done so often, 52 times 51, I've just memorized, it's 2652, 26 is half of 50, it is. 
really all I need to do is 12 times 11. In other words, it's actually possible to do some of these in your head. Uh, 12 times 11 is 132. You can do, guys can double check me, but top times top, bottom times bottom. You can reduce the fractions if you want to. They will be reduced in lowest terms in the answers. So in the answers in your homework or in the answers on the multiple choice, they would have gone 12 out of 52 times 11 out of 51. And remember, how do we turn this into a lowest terms fraction? Ma uh, math, enter, enter. I guess it's 11 out of 221. That's fine. I'll take that too, but I bother. The reason I like the tree so much is, okay, what's the probability of not getting a face card on the first draw and getting a face card on the second draw? Can you see which branch that is? Boom, boom. Alex, what times what? Yep. 40 out of 52 times 12 out of 51. Sometimes you'll see them just put the two numbers in brackets. Sometimes they'll put a time sign between Whatever. Hopefully you've seen enough math now that you're flexible. Uh, oh, I can do this in my head because I know that 52 times 51 is 2652. Don't believe me, try it, but it is. And I can go 40 times 12 because 4 times 12 is 48. So Justine, 40 times 12 is 480. I don't need my calculator. <laughs> By the way, what if we were picking three cards? I'd have two more, two more, two more, two more. How many branches would I have grand total? Two more, two more, two more, two more. How many branches would I have grand total? Eight. What if I was picking four cards? Sixteen. What if I was picking five? Okay, you know what? A tree is great for two or at the most three draws. After that, it gets unwieldy. But we're going to start to notice today that maybe we can also pull out, later on, some fundamental counting principle shortcuts. For example, you may notice this is something times one less. Maybe there's some room to bring in some factorial type of notation. And there is. But we always start out with trees. And much like last unit when I told you my fallback was always the fundamental counting principle and then see if the shortcut works, my fallback is almost always a tree. If it's two or three cards, two or three events, tree. More than that, sometimes even still I'll do a tree if it's a fairly easy branch to visualize. Example two. Two cards are drawn from a well-shuffled deck of 52 cards. What's the probability that... Now I looked quickly at A, B, and C. What event are A, B, and C all concerned with? Hearts. You know what? I can use the same tree for all of those. D is going to be different. I'm going to see if by the time we get to D, I'm good enough that I can visualize the specific branch that they want without actually drawing it out. And that's the next step is I draw a tree on a test all the time. But in my homework, sometimes I'll try and visualize the branch and just see if I can get there. So here, though, because it's A, B, C, all involving hearts, it's well worth drawing the tree. So it's going to look like this. Hearts one, not up, not hearts, not hearts one. What will I use for hearts two? Do you think? H two. One thing I don't like about these notes is they always use A and B. I think that's dumb. Like here, I would have used F one and F two. Face card one, face card two, because those are letters that make sense to me, and I can keep track of them. Um, so I'm gonna go uh, hearts two, not hearts two. Hearts 2, not hearts 2. All right, let's see if we can fill in the branches. Kyle, how many hearts are there in the deck? I should use red for hearts. How many hearts are there in the deck? Sorry, out of? How many non-hearts are there in the deck? Please don't count. Use the complement. 39 out of 52. Okay, down this branch, Kyle, we picked a heart, and it does say without replacement. If it was with replacement, by the way, these branches would all be exactly the same as those ones, and it would be independent and kind of boring. Uh, without replacement, how many hearts are left in the deck, Kyle? Out of? Yep. How many non-hearts? Out of? Good. Down this branch, we didn't get a heart. 
How many hearts are left in the deck? 13 out of 51 and 38 out of 51. Double check. Each set of branches adds to one. Yep. Uh, dependent or independent? I think the odds depend. And that's, by the way, that's how I remember the term dependent. I really say to myself, yeah, it depends which branch I went down. Oh, it's dependent. Okay. Now let's answer the questions. Both cards are hearts. 13 out of 52 and 12 out of 51. It's 26, 52. And I have no idea what 13 times 12 is. Right? Both cards hearts, right? Ian? This one, right? What is 13 times 12? 156? I should have known that. 12 times 12 is 144, plus 12 is 13 times. I should be able to do that. Okay. Uh, neither is a heart. Which branch is neither a heart? H1, H2. Sorry, not, eight, not H1, not H2. I said that wrong. It's going to be 39 out of 52 and 38 out of 51. It's going to be 26, 52. I have no idea what 39 times 38 is. 1482. C. Exactly one is a heart. Listen very closely. Ready? It seems to me that when it says exactly one of the two cards is a heart, that could be this branch or this branch. What does or mean? Add. You know what? The basic rule for trees is multiply down, add across. It's going to be The first card, a heart. Second card, not. That's this column right here. Or, plus 39 out of 52, 13 out of 51. And you know what? I'm also sensing there's going to be a common denominator here of 26, 52. And so I'm just going to go 13 times 39 plus 39 times 13. Or what's an even shorter way that I could do that? I think times 2, right? Because 13 times 39 plus 13 times 39. Uh, 10, 14. What we're really saying, Dylan, is now that you're awake again, the first card or the second card could have been a heart. First card a heart, second one not, or first card not, second one was. All right. D, both cards are aces. Okay, we're going to try and visualize the tree. I think both aces, I think what that's saying is find the probability of ace one. My abbreviation for and is a comma because, strangely enough, that's what it is in English too. Ace two. Ian, are you asking about D or about C? I don't think so. Let's find out. Ready? So visualize a tree looking like this but with no numbers. How many aces are in the deck? How many aces are in? Oh, I want to gamble with you. Please come play poker at my house. Please. How many aces are in the deck? Four. Four. Out of 52, right? So that's the first four out of 52. We picked an ace. How many aces are now left in the deck? Three out of 51. By the way, what if I wanted to find the odds of getting three aces in a row? 
How many aces are now left in the deck? Two out of 50. What if I want to find the odds of getting all four aces back to back to back to back? I would all then multiply by one out of 40. We're not going to do that. You can do a tree, a three level or a four level tree in your head if it's the same event over and over and over and over and over because that's easy enough to keep track of. If it's different events like this one where one is and one is not a heart, then there's always more than one branch. And to try and keep track of all of those, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to miss a branch. Draw the tree. Oh, Ian, what's four times three? Yes. And you know what 52 times 51 has been for every one of these questions? 2652. By the way, what are the odds of getting two aces in a row? Not very good. That's why it's a good poker hand. What are the odds of getting no hearts? Pretty good. Almost 50-50, but not quite. Okay, so far? Like I said, you can do a tree of more than two levels in your head as long as it's all the same event. Example 3 says, what's the probability if we draw three cards without replacement that all three are spades? What they're really saying is find the probability of spade 1, comma, spade 2, comma, spade 3, comma. Ari, how many spades are there in the deck? How many spades are there in the deck? Are you saying 13? Because here's what I'm hearing. Teen? Teen? Okay. Out of? And now how many spades are there in the deck? We've picked one. How many are left? Out of? And now how many spades are left in the deck? 11 out of? Oh, by the way, if you're playing five-card poker... Five spades, a flush, a spade flush, would be 10 out of 49, 9 out of 48. And then if you multiply that by 4, because there's four different suits, that tells you the odds of getting a flush. Anyways, what's this one? This one, you know what? Let's wimp out. 13 out of 52 times 12 out of 51 times 11 out of 50 math, enter, enter, apparently 11 out of 850. By the way, Jesse, do you notice that I can go down by ones here? Probably I can bring in some factorial notation, times by one less, times by one, and same with on the bottom, and that's going to be a couple of days from now. We're going to say, okay, let's find some shortcuts. But when in doubt, I think that I shall never see a thing as lovely as a probability tree. To paraphrase a famous poem. Example four. Randomly select one bill from pot A and one bill from pot B. Okay. From pot A, you can get a zero. You know what? I need to make this probably a little wider, don't I? You can get a 0, a 10, or a 20. And then it looks like from pot B, you can get a 0, a 10, or a 20. A 0, a 10, or a 20. A 0, a 10, or a 20. What are the odds of getting a 0 from pot A? 1 out of 3. What are the odds of getting a 10 from pot A? 1 out of 3. What are the odds of getting a 20 from pot A? 1 out of 3. Double check, by the way. Do those add to 1? Yep. I haven't done pot B yet. Relax. Ready, Troy? What are the odds of getting a 0 from pot B? How many zeros are there in pot B? 1. How many cards are there in pot B? Ah. So Troy, my friend, what are the odds of getting a 10 from pot B? Do I need to draw two 10s, or can I just weight my branch with a what? Don't reduce fractions. What can I put here, sir? 
Okay, now down this branch, I got a 10 from pot A. Will that change the odds of pot B? Oh, dependent or independent? Because I'm noticing that these branches are all going to be the same regardless of which first branch I went down. They're all going to be one quarter, two quarters, one quarter. And again, Troy, the reason I yelled that you don't reduce the fractions, isn't it easier to do your check to see that it adds to one like that rather than having a one half there? Yes? Right? Adds to one, adds to one. There's my tree. Oh, and as we said already, Jesse, the fact that these three, these three, and these three are all identical, uh, independent. Okay. Let's answer the question. A. What's the probability of getting a $10 bill on each draw? Now, this one is complicated enough. I think I'm going to put check marks underneath the correct branches. So a $10 bill on each draw. Actually, that one, there's only one option. $10 bill on each draw. That's this one here, isn't it? One out of two. Sorry, one out of two, Mr. Duick. One out of three. And two out of four. 2 out of 12, 1 sixth. B, what are the odds of getting only a one $10 bill? Here is where I'm going to use check marks, I think. Did I get exactly one $10 bill down this branch? Did I get exactly one $10 bill down this branch? Yeah, a 10 and a 0. Did I get exactly one $10 bill down this branch? Did I get exactly one $10 bill down this branch? Yep. Down here, no, I got two. Down here, yeah, I got exactly one 10. I also got a 20, but the question is just asking, getting exactly one 10. That's exactly one 10 and a 20. Uh, oh, you know what? This is exactly one 10. Those are the branches there. There's four of them. Listen close. This branch or this branch or this branch or this branch. Amy, what does or mean? Add. Or if you want a quick way, multiply down, add across. Oh, before I forget, who has the solution keys for the workbook? Okay. The workbook does their trees sideways. I do my trees vertically. They do their trees sideways. I can't draw them. I learned this way and I tried switching one year and I just couldn't visualize and draw them properly. So I guess for them, it, the rule would be multiply down the tree this way, add across. Just letting you know. So anyhow, let's get the answer. Uh, one out of three times two out of four and one out of three times one out of four and one out of three times one out of four and Pat, are you going to your calculator for the one times table? Are you serious? Are you serious, my friend? N put that away, my friend. What's the denominator going to be? Please tell me you can see the denominator is going to be a 12. And Pat, my friend, in your head with no calculator, please, God, what's 1 times 2? Plus 1 times 1, plus 1 times 1, plus 1 times... Oops, I think this last one should be a 2 here. I was too angry when I saw you reaching for your calculator. Really? It's the 1 times table. I'm pretty sure I get 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2. I get what? 6? Which, without a calculator, Pat, what could you reduce that to in your head? Oh, thank you for redeeming my faith in you. By the way, someone always does every year, and I always jump on them. You were the first one that I saw. It's the one drunk. Come on. These things here should be crutches, but they should not be stretchers, right? You should lean on it, but you shouldn't be collapsing all your weight on it. You should not have your some arithmetic in your head. Now, let's go to the question that many of you have wondered. In particular, Stephen. In particular, uh, Kyle recently, in particular, oh, who's been late a lot for class? Let's look. Uh, Dylan's been doing pretty good. Karen, late occasionally. You've often wondered if you're the third person in late, 
let's suppose that the previous two have all rolled, instead of a five, let's cross it out and make it a six. Or maybe you're interested, maybe they both rolled ones, what are the odds of me rolling, whichever, it's going to be the same no matter what. What's the probability of Mr. Duick having three students show up late and having all three of them roll back to back to back sixes? Or, in probability speak, what's the probability of six and six on the second and six on the third? What does and mean? Multiply. By the way, when you roll a dice, is it dependent or independent? Does what you roll previously have any effect on what you're rolling next? So you know what? I'm just going to visualize this single branch of the tree. What are the odds of rolling a six? Karen, my angel, what are the odds of rolling a six? On a dice? How many sixes are there on the dice? How many numbers are there on the dice? So what are the odds of rolling a six? Absolutely. And? Dylan, what are the odds of rolling a second six? And? Kyle, what are the odds of rolling a third six? What are the odds of getting three sixes? Or have I had three ones in a row in this class? I, th I know I have once this year and I've vented because you know what the odds are? They're stinking small. The odds of getting those three ones in a row, I was yelling at the fates saying, what are you doing to me? It's one out of 216. That shouldn't happen very often. B. What are the odds of getting at least one five in three rolls? Okay, this one's a bit trickier. Oh, but let's cross out the five. Let's make it a six. So three students are late. What are the odds that Mr. Duick feels some sense of justice at least once? Okay. What does at least once mean? Once or... Or, what does or mean? Now here's the problem. What I would have to do to solve this would be first one six, second two not, next two not. First one not, second one yes, third one no. First one no, second one no, third one yes. That takes care of all the at least one, the, the ones. Then for two sixes, I would have to look at first person, second person, third person. For, ugh, I don't want to do that. That's why I put in brackets think complement. What's the opposite of at least one six? Think about it. What did you say at least one was? What or what or what? One or two or three. What's the opposite of that? I heard it finally. What? None. The opposite of at least one is none. This is going to be much easier to do. Instead of finding, sorry, let's write it this way. Instead of going the probability of at least one six, it's going to be much easier to go one take away the probability of none because none is the complement. And we said last day that if you know the complement, one minus the complement is the other one. In fact, we've been doing the complement half the time on our card trees. I'm willing to bet nobody counted 39 or 38. You just subtracted. Now, why is this so nice? So this is going to be 1 minus the probability of not a 6, not a 6, not a 6. which is going to be 1 minus, what are the odds of not rolling a 6? How many non-6s are there on the dice? 5 out of 6, and 5 out of 6, and 5 out of 6. So 5 out of 6 times 5 out of 6 times 5 out of 6, that's the odds of getting no 6s. 1 minus that is the odds of getting at least 1 6. 
What are the odds of Mr. Duick feeling that there is some sense of justice in the universe? Oh, you know what? I'm not even sure I need a calculator for this, Pat. Because I know this is 1 minus 125 over 216. Because way back in logarithms, Mr. Duick made me memorize certain exponents. It's 5 to the 3rd over 6 to the 3rd. And you know what 1 is? It's also 216 over 216. This is really 216 take away 125, which is 116 take away 25, which is 96 take away 5. I'm willing to bet the answer is 91 over 216. In my head, you guys can fall back on your stretchers and check me if you need to. Am I right? Yeah? And what that means is almost half the time I should feel justice. You know what else that means? I don't think these dice are properly balanced because I'm telling you I don't feel justice almost half the time. I get hosed an awful lot of the time, I think, in my dice of fate rolling Man, I have some kids that just happily trounce through ones and twos this entire year. I got some kids that are up to double digits on ones and twos. And oh, why do you mock me? Calm blue ocean. Calm blue ocean. I could. I could drill a little hole, put a little weight on the one there, cut that out, glue it back in, and then it'd be more likely to end up that way with the one on the bottom and the six on the top. I could. Can you turn, please, to page 443? Page 443. Well, first you can turn to page 441, because I know some of you like to uh, use your book for studying as well. This is the AND formula. It's on your formula sheet. But, Justine, did we really use it? I showed it to you, but then I said, tree, 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 tree. But that's the justification for the tree. Fine. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Oh, and then it has the multiplication law for independent. You know what? I don't know why they make a big song and dance about, okay, fine. They're independent. So the branches are the same. And stale means multiply. Whatever. Then it walks you through some lovely examples. I'd like you to now go page 440. <laughs> page 443, and I'm not going to sign every single thing that I said at the end of exercise 4, but I am going to give you some of these. Let's see. I think number one is good. Um, six is good. Seven, now seven is with replacement. That means your branches won't change on the second level because you're putting the card back in. These are independent. That's okay. Eight is the same question, but without replacement. Oh, look at number nine. The probability that Sarah will pass grade 12 math and grade 12 physics. Oh, I have to look at that one. Now, they told me that they're independent. What that means is my second half branches will be both the same either side. Okay, nice. Skip 10, I think. Twelve is good. And then if you could turn to page four fifty. On page four forty eight they introduce a tree, but you can see I said to you they do their tree sideways, which in some ways I guess is nicer. I have a hard time, my math brain, and I know I'm weird. I have a hard time reading these and drawing these sideways. If you like them better sideways, you'll get full marks, no problem. 
And every year I have a couple of kids who look at the solution key and like that approach better. Good. I'm fine with it. Anyways, I said turn to page 450. Uh, Got to do some basketball, dear to my heart. So number one, I got enough hockey players that will do number three. Five. Take a look at number seven, please. With Dylan in this class, Karen in this class, I think we have to do, oh, with Michelle in this class, not in this class right now, I think we have to do number seven. The probability, uh, especially with her alarm having gone off last class at about, what was it, about 9.15 in class? Okay. Okay, so we'll definitely have to do number seven. That's kind of a neat one, by the way. Uh, I'm not going to worry about Dr. Chang and Dr. Barber number, and Dr. Adams. Um, no, I think we're going to stop there. I'll assign the ones from page 460 next class. Got about 15 minutes, just a little bit shy of 15 minutes.